James chapter 5 Yakobo mlango wa 5 and from verse 13 kuanzia mstari wa 13 Let's go there so that we see what the Bible says Is anyone among you suffering let him pray Is anyone cheerful let him sing psalms Is anyone among you sick let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much Elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit now if you listen to that portion of scripture ukisikiliza sehemu hiyo ya maandiko the apostle James ah uh, huyu mtume Yakobo uh, takes prayer and uh, places uh, gives it such a high premium anachukua maombi na na kuyatukuzisha sana because according to him if anyone is afflicted kama mtu anatatizo the answer is let him pray anasema aombe if anyone is sick kama ni mgonjwa let him pray aombe all call the elders to pray for him au waite wazee wa muombe if anyone is cheerful kama mtu anafurahi let him sing psalms let aimbe, him give thanks aimbe zaburi na shukuru at the end of the day na mwishowe he is telling us that prayer according to him anatuambia maombi kulingana naye is the one thing that is going to take us out of every uh, issue we have ndio kile kitatutoa kwa kila hali ambayo tuko kwayo and i want to bring you this word today nataka kuwaletea neno hili leo on effective praying katika kule kuomba kukamilifu effective because Many people pray kukamilifu kwa sababu watu wengi huomba but they don't see the result of that prayer lakini hawaoni matokeo ya maombi yao And here we have the example of actually the prophet Elijah. Na hapa tuko na mfano wa Nabii Elia because that's that, that, that's a, the, the example that James uses to tell us why we should pray. Huo ndio mfano anaotumia Yakobo kutuambia kwa nini tuombe. Now Elijah Elia, found himself in a situation much like ours today. Alijipata katika hali kama yetu leo. There was a national crisis. Kulikuwa na matatizo ya kitaifa. For him it was drought. Kwake ilikuwa ni ukame. And uh, everyone needed food. Na kila mtu alihitaji chakula. And we know from the story. Na tunajua kutokana na maelezo. He challenged the false prophets of Baal. Alikabiri manabii wa Baali. And called them for a contest on Mount Carmel. Na akawaita katika mlima Carmel. Then after prayer, na baada ya maombi, the Lord heard his prayer and there was rain. Bwana akamsikia na kukanyesha. And then uh, James uses that to hilo. tell us that if we can pray in the same way kutuambia kama tutaomba namna hiyo then we can get the same results tunaweza kupata matokeo hayo Elijah was Elia. not an angel Ahakuwa, he was a man like us hakuwa malaika alikuwa kama sisi he had a nature like us alikuwa na hali kama but zetu. he prayed lakini akaomba there is a way he prayed kuna namna alivyoomba that caught god's attention ambayo ilimshughulisha mungu and i have realized this na nimeelewa hivi that if you can understand how to pray kama ungeelewa jinsi ya kuomba you can pray your way out of any crisis unaweza kujiombea ukatoka katika hali zote it's amazing to realize jesus actually came to, uh, uh, selected 12 men and uh, much of the work he needed them to do was preach inashangaza Yesu alichagua watu 12 waliohitaji kuhubiri but then lakini we don't see anywhere in scripture where he taught them hatuoni kokote katika maandiko alikowafundisha this is how to preach hivi ndivyo utahubiri point 1 ya kwanza ya pili no hapana but we see in scripture tunaona katika maandiko they even came to him and asked walikuja kwake wakamuuliza lord teach us to pray bwana tufundishe kuomba because they knew kwa sababu walijua and jesus knew na yesu walijua if you know how to pray kama ungejua jinsi ya kuomba and pray in the right way na uombe inavyofaa that will open the door hiyo itafungua milango for you to know how to preach ili ujue namna ya kuhubiri i'm not saying we shouldn't go to bible school don't get me wrong sisemi tusiende katika shule ya maubiri but the key 
being was, Jesus knew if I can teach them to pray, then they can very easily do the other thing. So what is this kind of praying that Elijah prayed and it caught God's attention? Because if we can pray the same way, then we will get God's attention. And as I kept on praying and searching scripture, I discovered four things. I know there are many things, but I discovered four key things that will make your prayer effective. Number one, effective prayer must meet the demands of a just God. Ni lazima ya kutane na, 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 na madai ya mungu muaminifu mwenye haki. It must satisfy. Ni lazima imu, 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 imu That it must satisfy the justice of God. Ni lazima basi iweze kufanya mungu aone kweli inaitajika kufanyika na mnaplani. Let me give you two scriptures before I explain what that means. Wacha ni kupe maandiko mawili kabla ya kueleza. Deuteronomy 32.4. The Lord appears to Moses and says, He is the rock. His work is perfect. And all his ways are justice. All the ways of God are justice. A God of truth and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. Now, if you listen to that statement, describing God, it says all his ways are justice. He is a God of truth without injustice. Several times, wakati mwingi, when man approaches God in prayer, wakati mtu mungu, mtu, mungu kwa maombi, sometimes because we are talking about the New Testament and the grace and the mercy and things like that, kwa na nena kusu, jipia, mambo ya neema, na na mambo kama we hai. tend to downplay the place of justice. Wakati mwingine, ya haki. Justice means haki inamanisha, whatever God demands from man, kile mungu kutoka kwa there are principles that he has established kuna ambayo ame, ameaweka, and they must be met. Na ni lazima he will not be swayed by injustice. Na Let me give you an example. One time someone was brought for prayer. Siku moja mtu kwa Allow me to use that example. A Bali. true example. Ya, ni, ni mfano he had stolen something kitu. from his employer. Kutoka kwa and uh, as it happens in Africa, Na kama Africa mnajua, the employer sought help from a witch doctor. A yule msaada wa mchawi. So this guy began to, to, I don't want to describe, there, there was a funny manifestation. You have heard these stories of people eating grass and things like that. So, when this guy was brought, the question to me was this. He needs prayer. But you are forgetting someone somewhere lost his goods. So, now you are torn between setting this guy free and uh, injuring the other guy who lost his goods. And the Lord very quickly helped me tell this guy to first return whatever he stole. And when he called the employer because he had the phone, anyway, he had the phone number, I didn't even pray for the guy. He was set free. Now, what happened? The justice of God demands this. When you steal something, you return it. Hello. Hello. You know we want to sway the justice of Unajua, God. We want to come jumping up before God. That's why I like you, you know sometimes making fun. If you listen to believers, you will know when someone is trying to evade the justice of God. Every time prayer begins with a long sermonet to God. Oh God, you are a God of mercy. You are a God of second chance. You are 
Why God of that chance? In the days of ignorance you chose to overlook. You sent your son to die for me. Hallelujah. Jesus died for me. It is because they are running away from something that they know the Lord is telling them. Before we can talk about me hearing your prayer, there is something you need to do. In the Old Testament, there is a word called restitution. That you steal something when you are caught, you pay it back before now you come to the priest. Now, I want you to look throughout scripture and you will realize the justice of God has not changed. You can try to go around in circles, but that is not going to to, to help you. Let me give you an example, especially when you are praying for families. If you are, I will use an example that I know, especially here in Kenya, we are very much familiar with. If your father stole public land, or took land, uh, uh, you know, from a widow, and that is where you are still dwelling. You realize as much as you are praying, telling God, oh God, we need help. There is another family that is praying to the same God, telling God our land was taken away. Now, if you are God, which prayer would you answer? Because you need to ask yourself that question. There is a family that is hurting because their land was taken away. The one who took away the land is also praying, oh God bless me. Which prayer would you listen to? Become God for a few minutes and tell me which prayer you would answer. So that you realize when we are talking about the demands of a just God, that's where we come to God and begin to acknowledge where we are wrong. If you look at the story of Elijah, he came and began to repent. He repaired the altar that was broken down because he realized in as much as we are coming before God, God is a God of justice. Exodus 34. This is a statement I, I I really like. From verse 6, it says this. Exodus 34, 6. This is the time the Lord uh, appeared to Moses. Moses prayed, show me your glory. And then he told, me, he told him, there is a place by me. I will put you in the cleft of a rock and then I will pass by. When the Lord passed by, this is what he said. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and the truth. Then he says, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and the transgression and the sin. Listen to the next statement. And by no means clearing the guilty. He will by no means clear the, 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 the guilty. He will visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. That statement where he says, who will by no means clear the guilty. That is what justice is all about. Justice demands that a crime receives the due punishment. Of course, I know you are saying, but Jesus took it on the cross. That's why I'm saying now, for you to pray effectively, you need to meet that demand. And the only way is for you now to approach from that point. Yes, Jesus died on uh, in my place. I am guilty. Mimi, I did A, B, C, D. This thing Mambo haya. is 
maybe afflicting me because I did A, B, C, D. I am being sent to jail. You know, it's funny. You meet believers telling you, pray for me, I'm being, you know, uh, harassed in the office. There are enemies who are trying to bring me down. And you begin to quote all kinds of scriptures. No weapon formed against me shall prevail. Every tongue that rises. But then when you begin to interrogate them, you realize they are guilty of something. They are not being falsely accused. There is something they have actually done. You will not go far in prayer until you begin to meet a just God who will by no means clear the guilt. But the same scripture says, but will forgive. Meaning you must now come and admit I am guilty. And that may mean the Lord telling you you need to do A, B, C, D. I know people who got born again and the Lord told them he turned the things you had stolen. And when they did that, the Lord began to really bless them. Because that is what justice demands. If you are doing something wrong, forget about praying, my friend. You can cry the whole day and the night. But the justice of God demands every sin Every transgression will meet its just punishment. You know, we want to we want God to sway justice on our side. But you are forgetting he is also the God of the other person. The injured party. If you are going to pray effectively, you must meet the demands of the justice of God. Number two, you must silence the claims of the accuser. And an accuser here, I'm talking about the devil. He's called the accuser of the brethren. Satan is real. Shetani and any time you begin to pray, he will show up. Not really in, in, in physically. But, but he pamoja. comes with certain claims. Why ni... this and this should not happen. Kwa nini hiki na hiki Part of dealing with the, 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 the meeting the justice of God is actually going to help you to silence the accuser. But also you need to go further and realize there is that place for you. That's why the Bible talks about rebuking casting out devils, things like that. You need to deal with the accuser. One scripture in the New Testament says this. James 4, 7. Ayakobo, uh, saba. James 4, 7. Therefore, submit to God. Hivyo kwa mungu. But then he adds, Na anongeza. resist. Zuia. Pinga. Resist. Pinga. The devil. Adui. And he will flee. Na ataondoka. It is good to realize we have an accuser. Ni vizuri kuelewa kwamba tuko na anayeshtaki who must be resisted ambaye ni lazima apingwe because he is there his, his work is to accuse kwa sababu kazi yake ni, ni kule kuzuia and you must resist him na ni lazima umpinge every prayer that is going to be effective kila ombi ambalo litakuwa you must silence whatever voice the accuser is bringing lazima unyamazishe kila sauti ya adui sometimes all what you need is to submit to god and then resist him. I mean, that's why the Bible talks about rebuking Satan. First Peter 5, 8. Talks about the same. He says, be sober, be vigilant, because you are a defasary. You have an adversary. You are a defasary. The devil walks about like a rolling lion, seeking whom he may devour. 
How do you deal with him? He says, resist him. Mpinge steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Satan's work is opposed. So he will oppose. Your job is to resist him. Steadfastly in the faith. As you pray for your family, you need to resist. Tell him you will not have my family. It is you resisting because we have an adversary. Or when he is attacking you with the sickness. You need to resist him because he will not let you go. It's not like the devil is going to have mercy on you and say, okay, I will let you go. You have to resist. The third point is this. There is the role of man. Kuna nafasi ya mwanadamu. Now, intercessory katika maombi maombi will never replace the responsibility given to man by God. Hayata ondoa ile sehemu ambayo mwanadamu anapewa na Mungu. I like the prayer of Jesus in John 17. Napenda maombi ya Yesu katika Yohana 17. He tells God, anamwambia Mungu, "Now glorify me with the same glory." Then he goes on and says, I pray for these ones. Actually, he says, I have finished the work you gave me to do. Now, prayer is not, cannot be a replacement for what uh, is called the role of man. There are things you need to do. Even where we read in James, he talks about Yacobo. pray, call the elders. That is the role of man. You call the elders of the church. Then he says, pray for one another. Why can't God just heal without us praying for one another? He even says, confess your sins one to one. It is what man should do. Can I speak to you about finances, for instance? The Bible says, he who does not work should not eat. Asile. You can pray all you want. That is a prayer that will not take you anywhere. He says, I will bless the work of your hand. How many people do you know have prayed their way out of poverty? I mean, just pray and long. They don't work. They don't save. They don't do anything the Bible tells man to do. And that's why, sorry to tell you this, that's why many intercessors are because they think prayer can replace work. Hello, it never works that way. And the same works for marriage. Speaking in tongues, my brother, is not going to replace the apology you owe your wife in English. Can you see me? It is your role to apologize. God will not apologize on Mungu your behalf. So you can speak in tongues all you want. Unaweza nena kuandika. You can fast until you look like a string. Unaweza hata kufunga ukae kama waya. After the fasting, baada ya kufunga, God is expecting you to wake up. Bwana anakutarajia uamke. And go and do na uende ufanye kile unafaa kufanya. Prayer Maombi. cannot replace Hayawezi what man is supposed to do. I have met people who are praying for things that God actually is telling them to do. Oh God, I need peace in my amani. home. Katika the Bible yangu. says pursue peace with all people. Na watu wote. It is your role Ni kazi yako. to look, to pursue Kutafuta to call that person and actually apologize. Or like we said, it is your role to do to right the wrongs you have done. You need to return some things you have stolen. You need to begin to treat people right. If God is going to hear your prayer and get you out of a crisis, otherwise you'll keep on praying. Jesus prayed in John 17. But he said, I, Jesus, I have 
given these men that you gave me, I have kept them by your word. You can read that whole chapter, John 17. Underline the statements where Jesus said, I have done this. I have finished the work you gave me. Jesus did not pray, Father, finish the work. He said, I have finished. He said, I kept this man by your word. It was his responsibility to keep them. There is what God is expecting you to do. Forget about praying every day. Prayer is good. I love prayer. I mean, it is what keeps us going. But you must realize there is a place of you to do something. You need to read the Bible. That's why Jesus said, the Holy Spirit shall remind you. No amount of praying is going to put scripture in your mind. You need to wake up and read. You need to do something what God is expecting you to do. Because there is a role of man. It is Elijah who rebuilt the altar. I mean, this guy could have prayed, Lord, I pray let an altar come down. But he did the hard work. There was nothing miraculous in building the altar. He built the altar. My favorite is even John, the father of John the Baptist. The angel told him, your prayers have been heard about a, a, a child. But guess what? Lakini, the Bible says, after this prayer, Zechariah went home. Zekaria arienda nyumbani. Brother, you need to go home. Unaitaji wende nyumbani. Zechariah went home. Arienda nyumbani. And the Bible says, King James, Na King James inasema, he knew his wife. I know you know what that means. It was him doing the hard work. And then John the Baptist was born. I mean, the angel has already appeared to him. But he needed to go home and to do something about it. That's how he got a child. It's the role of man. The last thing that will make prayer effective is found in Colossians 4.2. And the Bible says this in Colossians 4.2. Continue earnestly in prayer. Omba basi kwa ka, kwa 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 kuendelea. Being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Na uwe wakukesha katika kushukuru. The fourth thing is you release faith through thanksgiving. Unaachilia maomba imani katika shukurani. We know prayer works by faith. Ninajua maombi yanafanya kazi. Continue in prayer. Endelea basi and uh, one translation says, abide therein through thanksgiving. It is faith. Uh, it takes faith rather to begin to thank God for what you have not yet received. That's why it says continue in it. I have made the demands of God's justice. I have silenced the accuser. I have done what I needed to do. Now I need to activate my faith. Thank you Lord because you have given me what I have prayed for. It is faith. And that's why he said release it with thanksgiving. I mean, if you look at every man who prayed and God uh, uh, answers to prayer, you will see the four areas covered. I mean, Elijah told the, 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 the servant, go and check. And he knew the answer had come. If you want your prayer to be heard, then pray like that. You're going to be surprised. May the Lord bless you so much. Father, I pray that every person who is watching this telecast today, whatever their need is, you have told us if we are sick, we pray. I pray with this person, wherever they are, that you may meet them at their point of need in the name of Jesus. Those who need direction on what they need to do to meet your justice, I pray that you may speak to them in the name of Jesus. And I pray let each one of them have a testimony of what you are doing in their lives in the name of Jesus. If you are not born again, wherever you are, you can receive Christ because the justice of God starts there. Lazima umkubali Yesu. So, pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me my sins. Today, I acknowledge you as Lord and Savior in Jesus' name.
There are numbers that are scrolling on your screen right now. You can call us, you can text us, you can email us, you can use all means to get in touch with us and someone is waiting to pray for you.